So we worked with this in a number of cities. This is um, data for Phoenix. So you can see that, you know, the official data where the regional government had set out, they kind of had done a, a annual survey and they'd set out temporary counters for kind of two week periods and they measured bicycling at 42 locations. Where when we got, when we downloaded the Strava data, so you could get data for every street segment and every minute of the day, you get a measure of how many, a number, which was the number of Strava riders that were using that street segment at that time of day. So you get billions of records of data. The difficulty, just like I was talking about with the bike maps data, is that these data are biased. So you're, you tend to get more men that ride Strava and a higher number of people sort of aged 25 to 54. So, um, you know, because it started as a fitness app, um, you end up with more recreational riders using it. Um, at least definitely historically, that was the case. You tend to have more white users, more higher income users. So it's not a very good data set to use. Well, it's a wonderful data set. I love Strava and use it for lots of things, but it's, if you use it just at the, without any kind of consideration for how representative the sample is, you run the risk of making decisions that benefit folks that already have a lot of access to good transportation. So here's an example of um, one of the things that we started looking at was how representative is Strava. We know that there's this bias in who's using the app, but how representative is the data of all ridership? So this is a cool um, example. So on the top, you have data from one eco counter in the city of Ottawa. So every minute of every day, we can continuously see how many bicyclists we have. And then below, we have the same street segment, but we've looked at how the Strava data compares. And you see that there's like the bumps in the data are similar. But what is different is that um, in 2015, the you see, well, for the Strava data between 2015 and 2016, you see a big uptick in the data, um, the number of people using Strava in 2016. And this is because the city told um, the bicycle organization, hey, we're gonna, we're gonna use Strava data in 2016. So can you ask people to Strava all their trips, not just their recreational rides? and ask your users who aren't using Strava to start using Strava. So they made the data much more representative, which I think is interesting that, you know, if we communicate with folks about how we're using the data, we actually can make the data better. We also found that Strava data correlates pretty well with all ridership. So here you see these are two different locations. And if you look at the scatter plots, so on the X is the Strava um, riders and on the Y are the riders, all the riders. And here we have different dots that have different colors by season because these are from Canada where season matters a lot because unlike Santa Barbara, we get all the, all the things. Um, but we saw a correlation between the Strava riders and, and the, um, on all the riders of 0.98, which is super high. In this case, the slope was 37. So what this means is that one Strava rider is equivalent to 37 total riders. So we know that the Strava is just sampling um, the number of, because not everybody uses it. So on these kinds of streets, you'd see one Strava rider equals 37 riders. And then below is a different kind of street where the correlation is still good, but now one Strava rider equals 25 riders. So what we think, so, the, the key to making Strava representative of all your bicyclists is really to come up with a, a sort of set of rules that allow you to figure out in a particular setting, how many riders does one Strava rider equal. And the solution to doing this is at maps and geography. So we have looked at a number of different ways of doing this and we've built a number of different models. And we recently published a paper where we used map data to build models for five cities. And we actually found that if you just use the number of Strava riders 
the percentage of Strava trips that are flagged as commute trips, um, income, and safety. If you use those four variables, you can actually come up with a pretty good correction factor. So on, for example, on quiet streets, one Strava rider is going to represent lots of riders, but on busy, unsafe streets, um, one, one Strava rider will equal a lot fewer riders. So this is, uh, these graphs show kind of the accuracy of the maps that we could produce. And you could see, you know, the, the steeper the line and the earlier, at the lower number at which along the x-axis it gets to one on the y-axis, the more accurate. So Phoenix, um, we were able to correct the data most accurately, for example. And that was because they had the, the most representative bike count data. These are what the maps look like. So this is for the city of Tempe. And in this case, you know, 81% of street segments could be corrected to within plus or minus 50 bicyclists um, based on the average annual daily bicyclist. So that's great. And this means that now we've taken the Strava data, which is this big map data, and we've made it more inclusive. So now we can represent all the bicyclists more accurately. And we can give this to planners and safety researchers and they can use it to plan where they want to put infrastructure and also to create that denominator data that we need very often when we do our safety studies. Now, another cool thing about Strava is yes, it's this kind of continuous map, which is great, but it also has really detailed um, time data. So it means that you can look at ridership on your streets at different times of day. And I already showed you with the bike maps data how the time of day matters a lot because when you have um, sort of at 8 a.m. and 4 p.m. when you have lots of traffic, these are the times when bicyclists are most at risk. And so if you make um, risk maps based on all times of the day, you're gonna miss some of the nuance that's important for understanding safety. So we've been using um, Strava data to come up with these high resolution exposure or risk kind of maps. So here, map A, this shows a sort of hotspot map that we made using just safety data. And then the middle map is the exposure or the Strava data that we use to represent who's riding. And then map C is where we look at exposure and cases together. So this is sort of like A is like raw counts of COVID, B is like your population map, and C is where you've taken the counts and you've divided it by the population. And what you see is that on your map, the places that are most problematic move around. So um, whereas in map A, that Laurier Avenue really pops up as being the most problematic place. When you look at C, you've got some things on Bronson and Bank Street that come up as much more problematic. A is a good map of um, where you have lots of bicyclists. And so you have injury associated with them. But map C is really important because these are locations where the design of your city is contributing to more injury. And so because of that, it's really these map Cs that we are um, trying to promote and give to cities to encourage um, infrastructure, to support their um, infrastructure investment goals. Another thing that we're doing with the Strava data is that people call us all the time and say, hey, Bike Maps team, do you know where um, we're trying to invest in bike counters? We're going to install some of these eco counters. We want to get a good sample of our city, but we don't know where. So we're wondering if you have any input on where to put our counters. And for years when they would call, I would say, I, I mean, I don't really know. Go ask somebody who knows bicycling in your city because I just hadn't really thought through um, yeah, how, how we would do this. And then we had somebody on our team who was actually a remote sensing PhD and had got his um, PhD studying you know, satellite image analysis, particularly as it pertains to forest. He was, he was like, oh, Trislin, the data that we get from Strava at every single street segment, you can make like a time series associated with it because we have like 
every 15 minutes, we'll get a number of the number of Strava um, bicyclists that are out. And so we actually have all this time pattern that we could use to understand um, bicycling in the city. And so we actually break up the times. So for every street segment, we pull out something that looks like one of these mean temporal profiles. So you can see that in some street segments, you have these peaked bits associated with the commutes and you have high ridership. In some of the street segments, you have very low use and not much of a signal associated with the commute. So based on these, sig these sort of temporal signatures, we can group streets that have kind of the same pattern. So we used a clustering algorithm and we came up with um, six different patterns and then we mapped those out and we said, okay, so if you want to get a representative sample of bicycling volumes, just make sure that you put some counters in each of these different on streets from each of these different clusters. So this is what we would call a stratified sampling um, system. And so this is actually one of the most popular things that, that cities are asking us to do is to help them use data to make better decisions about where to put their bike counters.